Welcome to the God of Wonders radio broadcast with Pastor Kiruba Stephen and sponsored by El Bethel International Ministries. El Bethel International Ministries may be found on the web at album.org or you may call 845-360-0534 for prayer. Now, here's Pastor Kiruba. It is important for us to say no to ungodliness. The grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness. So we as believers need to say no when we have to say no to ungodly thought, to ungodly speech, to ungodly sight, to ungodly emotions, to ungodly feelings, to ungodly call from the enemy. Hey, get up and go do this. When that thought comes, are you a slave? Who just gets up and goes and says, oh, I'm going to do it. Are you so bound that you're not able to resist? If so, then you need deliverance. Have you really resisted enough to say that you need deliverance or have you not tried at all? God is speaking to your hearts today. If you want to see the glory of God manifested in your life, at the end of the day, if God calls you tonight, as Jesus said, oh, if your life is required from you tonight, what will you say to God? Can we say to God, Lord, I finished your will? Can we say that? Are we in a position to say that? I have done the will of God for this day up to this point. I'm clear before the living God. Then when he calls us, we'll be ready to go. But if our time is over suddenly without our knowing, then God says, who are you? Lord, I went to church. Lord, I went to Elbeth. Lord, I, you know, paid my tithes and offering. Lord, I, you know, shouted hallelujah. Lord, I prayed. I did this. I did that. God will say, I didn't see you there. It is very important for us to physically, spiritually, emotionally connect with God while we're in the house of God. While we're at home to physically, spiritually, emotionally connect with God wherever we are. When God calls us, he will know us because he knew us while we were here by our obedience to God. My sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. They don't listen to the voice of the stranger. So when the enemy comes and works through your flesh to bring anger or to make you to turn and look at your past, make you to go over your past life, or to carry bitterness. It is so important for you to say, I will not listen to the voice of the stranger. Period. That's it. No more room for bitterness. No more room for addiction. No more room for envy. No more room for immorality. No more room for pride. No more room for self-centeredness. I want to live the life that God has called me to live. Which is being crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. That means whatever I want, I'm going to put it down. Many times, it's not even what we want. It's the enemy that's trying to make us feel as if we want it. Don't go by feelings. Go by what God's word says. You are too precious and the call of God upon your life is too costly. Esau had everything at his feet. Esau was the firstborn. Rightfully, the birthright belonged to him. He had everything given to him. The reason why he lost the blessing was because he willfully sold the birthright that he had already. God is speaking to your hearts today. As the Bible says in the New Testament, let no one be like Esau. Hold on to what God has given to you. Salvation is too precious. Your soul is too costly. Jesus said, what shall man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing. Nothing. God help us. May God help us to look at our lives like how God looks at it. Not another human being. God is looking at us. As we heard in the song during worship that the Lord brought to us, Lord, let me be found by you, found by you, Lord. You're looking for loyal hearts. Let me be found by you, Lord. Let your eyes find me to be loyal, Lord. Let your eyes find me to be loyal, Lord. How can we pray that prayer if we don't push towards that direction? The desire that you have to pursue God is a desire that has come from God, dropped into your spirit. Praise God for that. We need that. Without that, nothing is going to happen. But with that desire now, we have to pursue the desire. Seek after what God has put in my heart. 
Go after it with everything that is within you. Going after God is letting go of everything that is anti-God. Going after God is letting go of everything that opposes God in your life. The Lord speak to your hearts today. When you go home, look at your life and write down the things that oppose God. Whatever the enemy is trying to bring to rob the call of God from your life. Write down the things that are anti-God in your life. Write it down. And see how many things are there. Even if there is one thing left, tell yourself, I'm going to take care of this. I'm, to go, I'm going to be a person who's, who's going to follow Jesus with everything that is within me. I'm not going to let this one thing stop me from the blessing that God has for me. It is so important. God told Moses, Moses, yes, you've been called. Moses, yes, I spared you when you were little. Moses, yes, I put you in that palace. Moses, I caused you to escape and I caused you to go to Midian. Yes. But without taking your sandals off, there's no conversation between us. Without taking your sandals off, you cannot enter into the call that I have for you. Consecration is top priority if you want to serve God. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord, period. Doesn't matter who says what. What does the word say? What did Jesus say? Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way. Many try to go in. But they will not be able to enter in. So strive to enter into that narrow gate. You know how serious that is? You know how important that is? This is just to enter in. But to walk in the call of God, it takes even more. But when you walk with God, it comes easy, it comes natural. You know why? Because the seed of Christ lives in us. When Jesus Christ lives in us, his nature, his desire begins to overtake every part of our being. Every part of our being. We desire what God desires. And then we must pursue the desire. We must desire what God desires. That desire comes from Jesus. Then we pursue. We make the choice. Every time the Spirit of God speaks to us. Now we heard about what the enemy can do, how the enemy can bring thoughts in our head, how the enemy can bring something from the past, how the enemy can cause feelings of anger, even feelings. If we want to pursue Jesus and you don't want to have angry feelings, but the feelings are coming, it's not coming from you, it's coming from the enemy. He is influencing your emotions at that point. What do you do at that time? You need to use the Word of God. And press that feeling out of your life. Push it out. That's the choice that we must make. Same thing. Anxious thought. Depressing thought. Any kind of old sin that the enemy may try to bring in. Immorality. Whatever it is. When the enemy comes, you know this is the voice of who? The enemy. It's not the voice of God. This is not the voice of God. When you know this is the voice of the thief, what do you do? Shut him out right away. Don't give another second to the enemy. God is speaking to our hearts today. When you are proactive in your own salvation, when you are proactive in your own call, God will become overactive in your life. It's a prophecy. When you become proactive, God will become overactive. When you take one step for God, he takes ten steps for you. That is who my God is. He never sits. He's not still. He gives you the desire. And he sees what choice are you going to make with the desire. I'm giving you my word. What are you going to do with my word? I'm giving you my presence. What are you going to do with my presence? I want to give you my power. But before that, are you empty? Did you discard the things that need to be discarded? Because you don't pour coffee in a dirty cup. You don't pour juice in a dirty cup. It is so important to keep our vessels holy. Holiness includes love. Without love, there's no holiness. Without holiness, there's no love. Perfect love will cast away fear. When we have the perfect love towards God, and that love that God that has put in us towards the people that God has for us, then what happens? It takes away every ungodly fear out of our lives. Causes us to walk in the path that God has for us. Satan cannot come and trick us, threaten us, do anything because our communion with God is unhindered. These disciples went with him. They saw something 
that the rest of them who were not there didn't see. The large crowd saw too. But the difference here is, I want to highlight this as the Spirit of the Lord wants me to. The disciples who went with Jesus and who stayed with Jesus were the ones who did what Jesus did, not the crowd. The crowd saw, but they never went and raised anybody else. But Peter did that later. You want to do what Jesus did? Stay with Jesus. You want to do what Jesus did? Stay with Jesus. If you want to stay with Jesus, you let go of all the things that Jesus hates. Being in a relationship with Jesus Christ is being in a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ, which is being faithful to God in everything, in your body, in your speech, in your thought life, you belong to Jesus. Your spirit, soul, body, and mind should be blameless before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, God's word says. So, is it a hard thing? If you live in him, as the Bible says, and if you move in him, and if you have your being in him, it's not a hard thing. Because you know what you let yourselves be taken over by? By the spirit of God. When the spirit of God takes over your life, he will stir you in the right direction. When the Spirit of God takes over your life, He will give you the power to tread on serpents and to trample scorpions, to anything that comes from the past, the Spirit of God will cause you to step on. Gone. But when you yield the members of your body to unrighteousness, then there's a war. God is speaking to your hearts today. Jesus never had a struggle when it came to temptation. Do you know that? Never. Because he was full of the Holy Spirit. Those who are full of the Holy Spirit will be driven by the Spirit of God. Where when sin comes, you will abhor that. You know why? Because the Spirit of God abhors that. Being dominated by the Spirit of God. If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, seek it with all your heart. God will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. If you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, be very careful greater the judgment will be because you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And many have not even known or realized that the Spirit of God departed from them as Samson did. He did not know that the Spirit of God left them. Be very careful when it comes to things of God. We're going to close in a few minutes. We want to really focus on what kind of a disciple are you? Are you a disciple? Or are you one among the large crowd? We can have 100,000 people here. But 50 people the Lord can say, I know them. We need to be one among them. Wherever we go, wherever we go, the eyes of the Lord should be upon us. To say that this is mine. This is my treasure. This is my treasure. This is my treasure. You know what? Whole heaven will be around his treasure to protect, to preserve. If you preserve yourself as the treasure of God, say that this body is a temple of God. This mind belongs to Jesus Christ because it's supposed to be the mind of Christ. God will protect you as his treasure. God will preserve you as his treasure. No weapon that is formed against you will prosper. God will guarantee your protection. God will guarantee your provision. God will guarantee your spiritual growth. When you line up with the will of God, be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ by rejecting everything that opposes God's plan for your life. Rejecting everything that opposes God's work in your life. Denying yourself is denying everything that is not good for you. Denying everything that God hates in your life. When you do that, God says, the second step is taking up your cross and following Jesus. Cross means persecution. Persecution from within and persecution from without. Persecution can come from within the family. Persecution can come from your job, workplace. Persecution can come in your community. Persecution can come in many different forms, in many different ways. However, if we are following the footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is so important to say, okay, when the persecution comes, my reaction should be like the reaction of the Lord Jesus Christ. Denying ourselves at that moment. Being a witness, picking up a cross, following Jesus Christ. When we do that, we show ourselves to be the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we stick with Jesus Christ, follow him wherever he goes, 
Be with him all the time. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, simply do it because it is good for you. God's call came to all these disciples and the Lord was speaking to us during worship. Just like he came and called Matthew, he's calling you. Just like he came and called Simon, God is calling you. And what did they do when God called them? What did they do? How do you know that they were disciples? They left their boats, they left their nets, they left everything and followed him. True discipleship is leaving and cleaving, leaving everything that opposes God, that keeps you from following Jesus Christ and cleaving to Jesus Christ as your everything. God's call has come to you today. Write down the things, go home and write down, take this very seriously. Go home and write down the things, anything, even if it's 0.1% in your life that you find something that's opposing Jesus Christ. You must write it down and say, this weight has to go. Because when you are running the race, you cannot carry any weight at all. Lay aside every weight, every sin that so easily clings to you. If you want to run the race and finish it successfully, at the end, Jesus is standing there. While you're running, he's going with you. God is preserving you. It is important for you to make the choice moment by moment by moment, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let us run with perseverance. How do you run? You, every time something opposes, which is the enemy, uses something to oppose your walk with the Lord, it is important to shoot it down through the word of God by making the choice to say no. Say no to ungodliness. Say no to ungodliness. By being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ, you clear yourself of every baggage, every weight that shouldn't be there. Otherwise, we're not a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Within the disciples, God is calling people in this church. You want to be people who the world will say, these are the people who turn the world upside down. There has to be dedication. There has to be a following hard after. There has to be pursuing Jesus Christ with everything, which is abandoning everything that God hates. From this message, the takeaway point that the Spirit of the Lord is driving again and again and again is, write down the things that you know that is opposing God, God in your life, that is opposing God's work in your life. That you know that the enemy is speaking to you. He's giving those thoughts. He's bringing those feelings. You want to crucify those things. Write those things down. And say that through the spirit of God, I'm going to overcome this. I'm going to take it to Jesus and say, Jesus, let your spirit work through me. Let your Holy Spirit dominate my feelings. Let your Holy Spirit dominate my personality. Let your Holy Spirit dominate my speech. Let your Holy Spirit dominate my thinking. Let your Holy Spirit dominate my relationship, my transaction, my finances, everything. Let your Holy Spirit dominate, Lord. As you make that as your priority and pray, God is very faithful. Well, didn't he say that? Ask and it shall be given. He will give it to you. He will dominate your feelings. He will dominate your emotions. You won't be impulsive. He will dominate your conversation. He will dominate your thinking. How many of you want to think like the Lord Jesus Christ? How many of you want to talk like the Lord Jesus Christ? Even if it's three words that should impart life to people. Then a whole lengthy talk and trying to, I'll tell my testimony or I'll tell this, I'll tell that at the end of the day. Well, we had a good conversation. Anybody can have a good conversation. What is the fruit? God is speaking to our hearts today. There has to be somebody's spirit raising from the dead. There has to be something concrete taking place. When Jesus spoke to someone, something happened. Something happened. Something happened in them or something happens to people who are next to them. When we speak to people, something must happen. If you want to have power in your words, when you speak, take your words before the Savior and see how your words are. Your emotions should be controlled by the Lord God Almighty. Take your emotions before Jesus. There should be no room for immorality, absolutely, in the life of any believer. No room for presumptuous sin in the life of any believer. If we call ourselves believers. Because God is the one who qualifies whether we're believers or not. Based on, if we've denied ourselves, are we picking up our crosses? Are we following Him?
If we have not forsaken all, we cannot be his disciple. One thing we don't want to happen in our lives is, with God looking at us and saying, who are you? I don't know you. And the next sentence is, get away from me, you worker of iniquity. What is he saying? He's saying, you worked iniquity. You did iniquity. Your work shows that you don't belong to me. It is important how we speak, what we do, where we go, what we think. Very important. Are we the temple of the Holy Spirit? Think about it. If I call myself a believer and I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit, am I a temple of the Holy Spirit? Do I have the fear of God within me? Is the fear of God within me? May God speak to our hearts today. May the Spirit of God rise up from within. May the Spirit of God stir up your hearts today, lead you to a deeper commitment if you have not been through that. May God help you at this hour. May God speak to you. The Lord of restoration and life is in our midst right now. Don't be part of that large crowd. Be part of the disciples who went with him. You can read the rest of the chapter on your own, but the focus is verse 1. As you know, there's not something I prepared, I read. God is my witness. But the Lord clearly said right here, God spoke. It is very, very, very important. We should know the heart of God. To be ready for the master's use is to be ready to be a disciple first. When you become the disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ by laying aside everything, he says, I can count on you. Out of the twelve who left everything, he chose three. He chose three. When I want to be, not just within the three, I want to be the one within the three. How about you? You have that desire? It should be in your heart. And I pray that God will transfer the desire that God has put in my heart and what I'm pursuing right into your spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your precious word. We thank you, Lord, that you love us enough to tell us the truth so that we may follow you faithfully all the way to the end. Lord, you've shown us that we cannot afford to be in the large crowd that followed you for a while and then turned back. We want to be among the disciples who stayed with you and followed through all the way to glory. Lord, we thank you for showing us that anything and everything that would keep us from pleasing you must be refused by us and rejected. Thank you for showing us, Lord, how to overcome the enemy, how to keep ourselves pure, blameless, Lord, by your precious blood and by the work of your Holy Spirit within us, that we may be among that blameless, spotless bride that would rejoice in your appearing when you return. In the meantime, Lord, you want to use every listener mightily, and I pray, Lord, and commit them into your hands that as they hear the truth week after week, there would be a mighty transformation and they would be soul winners, and people would bring you honor and glory always. We thank you, Lord, for the many who love you, who are listening, and want to grow closer to you. Grant them their heart's desire, Lord. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And now for our feature testimony of the week, let's hear from Elijah Suarez of the mental and emotional healings that he received from the Lord at El Bethel International Ministries Church. God has healed me from PTSD and autism. If he could do it for me, he could do it for you. You're the God of wonders. This broadcast with Pastor Kiruba Stephen was sponsored by El Bethel International Ministries. You may find El Bethel International Ministries at elbim.org. That's elbim.org. Or call 845-360-0534 for prayer. That's 845-360-0534.